Hey guys, today's video is about chicane and this is a 64 pound head unit or 84 US dollars which makes it the cheapest head unit that I've tested and it has Apple CarPlay. Let's check it out. So one of the viewers has asked me to review a chicane head unit and that is why I am making this video for you today. Chicane is a manufacturer of the more budget side of the Android head units. And this one's particularly interesting because it has Apple CarPlay. Now, you might imagine with it only being $84 that it's gonna be fairly low specification and you would be correct. This has one gigabyte of memory. Now my general rule of thumb is if you're gonna buy an Android head unit, you should buy one with at least two gigabytes of memory to be able to run all of your apps. Now that's not necessarily a big thing if your only intention is to use Apple CarPlay because remember the point of Apple CarPlay is that it streams applications from your phone, which means it's only important that your phone has a good specification this just needs to not lag. So that's what I'm gonna be focusing my attention on when I'm testing this unit. I'm, I'm going to do the usual Android tests like speed and look and feel, etc. But I will be starting off with the Apple CarPlay functionality to see if it actually is worth the money from that perspective. Now do please remember that I don't get paid to endorse any products or companies. And this is gonna to be totally based on my own opinion and experience of using this unit. Right, let's get it out of the box and have a look. And here it is. It's fairly light as I would have expected. It's a seven inch display with capacitive touch buttons along the front left hand side here with a reset button and a microphone just above them. And then you have this gold colored back which has the main loom point here. Then you have the other connections which we'll go into in a minute. The FM antenna input here and a GPS input here. Now this actually does remind me very much of another head unit that I've reviewed, which is the Esku, which we have down here. And I'll just show you the similarities here. They're pretty much identical units, so I'm gonna assume uh, that this is going to be very similar to this. The Esku was the previous cheapest Android head unit that I had uh, reviewed. So uh, we'll see how this one fares. So also in the box, we have a backup camera input a USB port, a loom which has video and audio auxiliary input, a video output, and a left and right pre-out. So there's not four channels. You don't have left and right for the front and rear. You only have a left and right channel output, which is exactly the same as the, uh, the Esku model as well. We have a GPS antenna. We have another USB port making two USB ports and then we have um, the main loom. And uh, it is disappointing to see that they did not include an ISO loom. You have to actually splice it in um, and that's quite annoying. And then you've got some brackets to, uh, to help fit it into the location that you wanna put it in. Right, let's go and put it in the car and see what it can do. So here it is in my Saab 95 facelift. And I've got two disclaimers before we start this video. The first is, uh, if you want to know why it is uh, sticking out of the dashboard, I will explain that a little bit later on in the video. And the second thing is, just remember that this head unit costs $84, uh, £64. Like it's definitely the cheapest thing that I have ever tested. Now, normally when I start my reviews, I talk about the look and feel of the device. Um, but I'm going to skip that for just a moment and I'm going to start with the features because this head unit has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And I think they are going to be the main selling points for this head unit uh, because it's 64 pound or $84, like ridiculously low price head unit for those premium features. Let's go ahead and test them. The way that we do this is we hit apps and we go to Zlink here. 
I'm gonna get my trusty iPhone and we plug it into the USB port. It says connecting on the screen. Oh, it's playing my playlist already. Let's just switch that off. Uh, this is Apple CarPlay, and as you can see, it looks pretty damn good. Uh, it's exactly as you would expect it to be. Look at look at how fast this is. You know, I can go into Google Maps. I can go into my Spotify playlist. I can go and uh, look at my uh, my different tracks and scroll through everything on here. Go home. Go to like tracks. You know, all of that good stuff is working instantaneously. That's crazy if you consider the money that you're paying for this unit. That's brilliant and I can see that it's charging the iPhone as well and the same goes for uh, Android Auto if I just unplug my iPhone and plug in my uh, USB-C cable for my Android phone and there we go starts playing my music as soon as I plug it in again. All right, you can see um, that it's gone straight to Waze, which is my navigation app of choice. Um, but if I go to Spotify, I can again go into all of my different areas of Spotify and it's quick. And again, the reason why it's fast is because it's connected to Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. It's using the phone's processing power to stream the apps to this head unit. So the head unit doesn't need to be powerful because all the power is coming from these phones to present you with all the apps on here. So just from that standpoint, awesome. Now, so I've turned the car off and now we're gonna look at the boot up speed. So I'm gonna turn the car on now. We've got the Android logo come up. And there's the chicane logo. I call it chicane, it might be cycane or cane. Android is starting. And there we go. So let's talk about the look and feel of the thing. The front of it's pretty minimalistic. Uh, it's got, you've got a standard seven inch display and you have these capacitive touch buttons on the left hand side here, which we've discussed already. The software, I mean, it's, it's nice and easy to deal with. You've got uh, navigation, Bluetooth, uh, local music, local video, uh, settings and apps. So very, very minimalistic on the, uh, on the face of things. Not much customizability here. The other thing is the screen. Now the screen is very, very touch sensitive and you know, it's nice uh, to use. It's, uh, it's fairly quick to navigate the menus as well, considering the price point, um, but you can see that the, the screen is of a lower quality, the contrast ratio and uh, the overall quality of the screen it is poor. But that's me being nitpicky because uh, in actual fact, considering the price point, it is very clear and uh, you know it's, it's gonna do exactly what it says on the tin. It is a bright day today. Um, as you can see, the sun is shining and we can easily see the screen. If we go into the car settings, you can see that it shares the same interface as the Esku units that I have reviewed. Uh, this first section here is the device ports and if you tap them it will show you what all of the wires do for each of the pins that are on the back of this unit, which is good, although obviously you need to actually have it wired up to begin with to be actually able to see these things, so uh, that's an interesting thing. Uh, under system info it shows you that it has Android 10 and it has one gigabyte of RAM and 16 gigabytes of memory. It has a quad core A7 CPU running at 1.3 gigahertz. In Android settings, if you go into these settings, it will go into the very basic standard Android settings that everyone probably has uh, seen before. Um, so no real design features there. Steering wheel alone we'll go into when we talk about car integration, along with logo settings. Also, if we pull down from the top, uh, we've got certain options here. For example, we can turn the car ramp on and off. You can turn the screen off with a tap of a button. Okay, let's talk about the speed. Now my general test when I'm testing these head units for speed is to run Spotify and Waze, okay? And see how long they take to boot up. So I'm gonna go to apps and then Spotify.
Yes, uh, quite a long time, still hasn't booted. Still waiting. There we go. Oh, no, yep, yeah, there we go. Okay, so can you see what difference it makes when you have a faster processor and more RAM? But because this only has one gigabyte of RAM and it has a fairly dated processor, uh, things take a lot longer to load. Now, don't get me wrong, when they're there, that's cool. And then you hit play. And you get your music. So if you don't want to use Android Auto or Apple CarPlay and you're happy to wait, this is cool. All right, let's try Waze. Black screen. All right, there we go. Actually, that wasn't pretty. That was pretty good. That wasn't bad. It's not the fastest, obviously, but still, it uh, it was pretty fast. So now Waze is open. So we did have uh, Spotify open. So if I go back to Spotify, there we go. We press play on here. So even with the lower end specification, the thing can multitask and that's cool. Right, let's talk about connectivity. There's a couple of things that this Android head unit doesn't have that other head units do have as standard, such as the ability to add an external microphone. It's not possible in this head unit. Another thing is that it only has stereo RCA outputs, whereas most other head units that you can buy have four RCA outputs for the left and right front and rears. It, it's missing all of those, but it does have the ability to have a reverse camera installed. As you can see, um, here is the reverse camera installed on this one. Uh, and that was very, very easy to set up and install. And you do have an analog video input. So if you wanted to connect a, uh, I don't know, a, a PlayStation 2 to this, then you could do that as well. Now, from a vehicle integration perspective, there's two parts to this. The first is how easy does it fit into a vehicle? Um, well, you can see it's half sticking out of the dash. That's because it's not very easy to fit into a vehicle unless you have a very particular type of car. And Saabs are notoriously difficult to fit specific Android head units in because of the weird design that they take. They don't follow a standard generic head unit like uh, this joying does, for example, if this will just slide into a cage. These types of Android head units, which is what this chicane is, make things very difficult. Um, they don't fit into a cage just like this. So what the manufacturers do is they give you these brackets, which you uh, screw onto the side and it gives them a little bit more of a, a little bit more depth so that it might go into a cage. But even then, it still won't go into the cage because the screws that they give you to screw this to the unit are too fat uh, and it increases the width of the head unit by about five millimeters, which is quite considerable. And then it doesn't fit into the cage, which means you can't hold it in the car. And there's a second problem with these, and that is that the head is too fat. And um, what I mean by that is this, look how it sits in the cage. So if it was going to the cage, it would be sitting out by, what, what is that, like two centimeters. Um, and that's why the head unit is sticking out at the moment. The only way to get around that in a car that requires the use of a cage is by actually cutting the cage on the top and the bottom here uh, to allow the head unit to go f deeper into it so that it's flush with the dashboard. And that is something that I've done previously with the A-Toto and with the uh, TI-CC2. I've had to do that because those head units, unfortunately, are designed in such a, a weird way um, that you need to make these modifications. I mean, it's not the end of the world. The only reason I haven't done it here is just because I don't want to ruin one of my cages. If you were permanently installing it in your car, uh, you would just use an angle grinder, cut up the cage, put it in, put that in and you're done. Now, moving on to the software, uh, the main thing that we care about for a vehicle integration is the steering wheel controls. And you can see uh, that my steering wheel controls are working absolutely fine. And the reason for that is because the software makes it nice and easy. And uh, we do that by going to car settings and then we go to steering learn and it says select a function that you wanna learn. You press one of these buttons and then you press a button on the steering wheel and it will learn it. And it's as simple as that. Very, very easy. So Chicane has done a really good job in that respect. And one of the other things that we like from a vehicle integration perspective is logos. And if you go to logo settings and you go to internal logos, you will find that they actually have lots of lovely logos for cars here, for many, many cars. 
Ah, uh, look, there it is, Saab. Okay, perfect, set setting logo. There we go. Right, now let's talk about sound quality. Now, a bit earlier in the video, I was talking about how this unit physically is quite similar to the Esku and the software is quite similar as well. But where they differ is the sound quality of the chicane is actually much better and the control over the audio it is a bit better as well. So if we actually go into the apps here and we go and we find sound effects, we have uh, this graphic equalizer here. So you got a 16 band graphic equalizer uh, and you have the ability to actually uh, select presets here. Um, or if you wanna go to custom, you can actually set the sound how you want it just by moving your finger up and down this. And it does actually tweak it very, very specifically. It does sound pretty good actually, uh, considering the price point of this. Now, obviously it's not gonna win any awards with sound quality. Um, it's not up there with the uh, Joyings and the TIs and the Atotos, etc. but it does sound good. Naturally on the screen, you also have fade and balance uh, just by hitting this button down here. You can move your finger around to uh, find the perfect positioning uh, from a speaker balance perspective here as well. And that's what you get for £64 or $84. Right, let's give it some scores. From a look and feel perspective, the physical face of the unit is very basic, but it does come with capacitive touch buttons. The screen is an amazing quality. It lacks color depth and contrast ratio, but it's still fully functional. And the touch ability is very, very nice. The software, whilst basic, is really, really easy to use and very intuitive. So you can basically find all the settings that you want to find. So from a look and feel perspective, I'm gonna give it a six. From a speed perspective, from an Android point of view, it only has one gigabyte of RAM and an older quad-core processor. And you can see that the apps are taking a considerably longer period of time than a newer, more expensive Android head unit. That being said, it does have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, and both of those operate at a very, very fast speed indeed. But from an Android speed point of view, I'm gonna score the unit a four. From a connectivity perspective, it does not have a external microphone output and it does not have the four pre-out RCAs that you normally find on an Android head unit. So I'm gonna score it a three for connectivity. From a vehicle integration perspective, it does have that really annoying Android head unit design which doesn't fit into any car that actually requires a cage. Uh, so it's gonna lose a few points for that. But the steering controls are very, very easy to program and it does give you the option of choosing your car logo and it actually supplies the car logos as well which makes this awesome so from a vehicle integration perspective i'm going to give it a six from a features perspective it has android auto and apple carplay yes they're both wired but the fact that they're there at all is amazing for a head unit of this price point so i'm going to score it a seven and finally from a sound perspective whilst it doesn't sound amazing it does sound okay and it does give you some control over the audio which actually does make a difference when you're tuning it to your car system. So from a sound perspective, I'm gonna score the unit a six. From a value for money perspective, the fact that this unit only costs 64 pounds or 84 US dollars makes it the cheapest Android head unit that I've ever tested. And the fact that it has the Android Auto and Apple CarPlay is just crazy. So I'm actually going to score this unit a 10 for value for money. I hope this has been useful for you. If you have any questions about this particular unit, please use the comment section below to ask them. And if there's a specific brand of Android head unit that you would like me to test, just let me know and I will see what I can do for you. Don't forget to like the video and obviously subscribe to my channel for more.